Please rewind this cassette. Uh, I want to talk about a movie I rewatched last night that I haven't seen in a few years. Um, I saw it originally in 2009 when it came out in the theater. And I loved it. And then I watched it again on Blu-ray when it came out. And then I watched it on television one day. And I hadn't seen it in... I want to go... I'd, I'd say six, seven years. I'm going to talk about District 9, the debut film from Neil Blomkamp. The South African filmmaker uh, who made a series of short films and was hired by Peter Jackson to direct a Halo movie, a um, hundred million dollar Halo movie that fell through. But then he was like, hey, you made this short film called Alive in Joburg. Do you want to make a feature out of that for 30 million and have way to special effects? And uh, Blomkamp's background was in special effects. So he made the movie for 30 million. Uh, and the movie made like $115 million domestically. It made $200 million worldwide. It was also nominated for Best Picture. Now, my question was, would District 9 hold up? That was really starting to get to me. Would this movie hold up after I hadn't seen it for so many years? Because it's a weird thing. A lot of people hate that movie. Uh, for everyone I know who liked the movie, like I did when it came out, um, I know so many people that think that the subtext is too obvious. Which, that's a fair criticism. It wears its subtext on its sleeve about the apartheid and racism and so on. Um, and a lot of people think that the film has a lot of the problems that were featured in Elysium and Chappie. It's just we didn't have those issues as much when uh, District 9 first came out. Now, upon rewatching it, I have to disagree with the critics of the movie. I think District 9 still really holds up and it doesn't have the issues uh, that are featured in Elysium and Chappie. Um, because it has a big difference between those two movies is that you actually care about the lead character and there's emotion to that movie. And that's the biggest problem I had with Elysium. Even though Elysium's not as bad as people make it out to be, it's just kind of a B movie. And Chappie's kind of fucking horrible. And Neil Baumkamp, his biggest problem, he's just become repetitive. He keeps making the same movie. Um, he needs to do something different. <laughs> I don't mind him staying in science fiction, but he needs to do a different kind of, of story. He can't keep doing the same story over and over again. I'm worried RoboCop's going to be him repeating. Because RoboCop was clearly an influence on District 9. So, But upon rewatching District 9, um, uh, District 9 still holds up, I think. Um, and I know a lot of people th wish the whole film would have stayed in that mockumentary format. Uh, after the first half hour, it stops doing that. That's the trick of the movie is that it gets all this exposition out of the way by being a mockumentary and then it just becomes a film at a point and then it kind of goes back to the documentary format in the end spoilers by the way uh be for this movie that came out 10 fucking years ago which is crazy it felt like yesterday i was 19 when district 9 came out what the fuck uh the thing that yeah the thing that still works is that it's the character of wickus it's uh the lead character and christopher the alien uh the guy starts out as such a fucking asshole. He's just the schmuck. Like, the way that Charlton Copley, who looks just like Spike Lee, by the way. What the fuck is with that? Why does that guy look like Spike Lee? Uh, not Spike Lee. Spike Jones. Spike Lee's fucking do the right thing guy. Spike Jones, the director of Being John Malkovich and that he's in Three Kings. Looks just like Charlton Copley. They're the same fucking person. He, he starts off, there's that abortion sequence early on. Where he just fucking kills the baby aliens and then they sets him on fire and he's like, you hear that pop? That pop's great, you know? And he's just like, whatever. And he only gets a job through nepotism that he's, you know, married to the, the head guy's daughter. So, yeah, the, the fact that it starts that way with that documentary format and then he's so selfish and that he has this humanity that comes in when, when he gets that black goo on him that he starts to panic and it turns into a body horror movie straight up. I mean, it's it's it is David Cronenberg esque. It is Frank Henenlotter. Uh, you know, just like ripping your fingernails out. You know, uh, parts of your skin start to come out. Um, it was really awesome rewatching it. I forgot how good that stuff is. The little d clever details that they like cat food. That the weapons are bio mechanical, so the aliens are the only ones who can operate them. The humans can't operate the weaponry. And the design of the weaponry, that there's still there's clearly a lot of the Halo influence from the Halo movie, the guns and all that. And they're video game guns. I mean, there's that one gun that can just like pull every all the bullets in and then shoot them back. It's badass. 
there's so many scenes in it. So District Nine, yeah, he's a dick, you know, and he he's a dick, you know, um, and then he 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 reacts very, uh, I think realistically when this thing starts happening to him, he does anything he can to get back to the life he wants. He does whatever he can. And, you know, the fact that Christopher tells him, like, hey, I can cure you, but it's going to take three years. And then he just keeps fucking him over. You know, he knocks him out with the wooden board and tries to take, takes the mothership. The whole movie's great because it builds to a third act of emotion um, and not just action. I think it's an emotional third act. Because really, what else are you going to do? It's about the military or they're going to come get this guy. They're going to come get this guy. And so like, there has to be an action climax and they set too many things up. Like you don't put a fucking mech suit in a movie like that. And you don't not use the motherfucking mech suit. Like rule one oh one. Don't put a fucking mech suit in a movie if you're not going to use it. All right. But he's really selfish, but you would be selfish. I think most people would be selfish um, in that situation. If you were turning into a fucking alien, uh, but the the great thing, like, yeah, he he's like, fuck, what a fascinating science fiction concept that you're turning into a, an alien. That's one of the, the best ideas in the movie is that he's turning in because it's the fly. Yes, but it's the fly not in that tragic way where the fly so beautiful because you really care about that relationship. And then at the end, she has to fucking blow his brain, brains out at the end of the movie. When he becomes an alien, there's this. It's got one of my favorite last shots in a movie the last like 10 years is that final shot of him making the flower and he's just an alien now. I mean, that's a fascinating place that it ends up because that's how he learns to have empathy for these aliens that he's burning at the beginning of the film. Uh, he has the empathy because he becomes one of them. There's a scene where the little alien puts its arms up and Christopher's like, he likes you. And he's like, you're like me. And he's like, you know, I'm not fucking like you. And there's that awesome scene where they break into MNU and it turns into like a fucking, yeah, it's a video game scene. And there's all these fucking, this is awesome action scene with him and Christopher and, they're, and they go into the room where all the aliens have been cut up and shit. Just a lot of cool stuff, like them making him shoot the guns and all that. They're going to cut him up into pieces. Yeah, he, he keeps fucking over Christopher. He takes the ship, he knocks him out, he gets in the mech suit, you're about to get a badass action scene, and then he tells Christopher, he's like, hey, you can have the fucking prawn, just let me go. And the, that evil bad guy, 80s bad guy, is like, run the fuck away, you coward. So then, you know, the guy runs off. He's going to leave Christopher behind and all that. And then there's that moment in the movie where he stops and the mothership, which has been hovering throughout the whole film. Great idea, too, because when you establish the documentary aesthetics in the first half hour, you can keep the cinematography in that handheld style and keep the film looking a little dirty. So that way the CGI looks better because of it. It's a very clever trick that Blomkamp does with that film. Uh, and I don't think he's ever going to really be able to get away with it again. Uh, is is it makes everything. But there's that moment where he's like, he can't go home. He has to accept he can't go home to his wife, which is all he really wants. But he can get this guy home with his son. He gets that he can get this guy home, but he can't go back home, and he has to kind of accept that. And he's gone through all this shit. He's been, he's been tortured. He cut his own fucking finger off. Uh... He he's at he's at I mean basically he's at the end of the end of a story you know he he can't keep running there's really nothing to do and then he looks at that mothership and he's like this guy can go home I can get this guy home that's a great little thing that's a great little character arc and a great little moment so then when he runs back um so then he you know he turns around and he says you know don't make me go through all this for nothing you know I'm gonna get you back home I'm gonna get you to your boy come with me. And then we get this fucking awesome action scene. I mean, he shoots the fucking pig at a guy. He shoots a pig at a guy. Come on. He just blows people up. And Christopher gets back. The ship goes up. The mothership, it, it flies off. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, and you know, Shurtuk, he's about to die. And then these aliens who now have the mothership there, they, they know what this guy did. And then they kill the bad guy. And then it's like, this is the last footage of this guy. We don't know where he's at. And then they go back to the documentary format. You know, because then they're showing us this isn't the the whole movie is really the trick of it is we're going to start showing you the documentary footage because this is a documentary about this guy. But then we're going to show you what actually happened, not what's been said, that he fucked aliens and all that. And then we're going to go back to the documentary at the end of the movie to wrap everything up. 
it's just really it really works that that shot of him looking up at the spaceship as it goes up and he's smiling and one of his eyes is the alien eye is the prawn eye and the one eye is the human eye one eye is the past one eye is the the future he uh that's such just great cinema it really is it's really powerful so fuck the subtext and the preachiness and the things that people don't like about it because that's all fair uh district nine is just a piece of storytelling that a character that he starts off not really caring about these things even though he shows humanity he doesn't want to kill these things but he doesn't he also is just trying to get ahead he's he wants to be successful he wants to make money he wants to get his father-in-law to like him uh and then slowly starts to care about these these things, finding out how fucked up it is. He doesn't want to kill the prawn. He doesn't want to kill anything. Uh, that when they make him shoot that prawn, he doesn't like that they're what they're doing with the bodies uh, of the prawns. Um, and then at the end, he, and then at the end, he just wants to get this guy home because he can't go home. You can never go home, as they say. And uh, just that, just that it combines the aesthetics of of video games and anime. That he's in a mech suit fighting all these guys, but there's an emotional investment and a character arc. And uh, that the alien does, and that the that it leaves so many questions: Is Christopher going to come back, and is it going to be an alien invasion film? Is Christopher ever coming back? Did he just escape? Um, did he just leave this guy here to be fucked? Who's probably going to be in District Ten now? All of that's great because there's a lot of questions brought up in District Nine, and a lot of them get really specific answers. But the questions that are left in the movie. And the things that we still wonder about um, is it just kind of adds to the genius of what it is. And uh, just that last shot, her with the flower, and then he's just an alien now. That's a fast, That's a great little science fiction thing. At the end, he becomes another species, and he's existing at it, but he still has these memories and these feelings of the past. He still is who he is. And they don't need to explain the technology behind it and specifically how it works. Um that he has to suffer to become a good person, that the suffering is important to his character, uh, and that he plays this bit role, this guy who just gets involved with this becomes the, the guy that's involved with like the most significant moment of history since the aliens arrived is the mothership leaving. I uh, really liked it. Still held up. Honestly played better this viewing than it had for me probably the second and third time I watched District 9. This probably played the best for me since I first saw it in the theater 10 years ago when I just loved it. Uh, but I just really felt emotional at the end when that ship leaves and uh, and when he's looking at it. And uh, really tight movie, really tight screenplay, uh, well-made, well-paced. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe it does become too much of an action movie and leave a lot of its more science fiction elements behind and some of its intelligence. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, 10 years later, it's still good. It still holds up. It's still Blomp Camp's like one really good movie. And uh, it's upsetting that he hasn't been able to evolve those aesthetics and ideas into greater works. Um, he's he's one of the modern disappointments uh, for filmmakers because District 9 is a really good debut. There's a lot of things that are pro that are problems with it you kind of forgive because it's like, well, hey, it's his first movie. It's the first time he made narrative feature, so he'll he'll get better. And he just got worse and worse. Um, so that, that's unfortunately, uh, I guess it was just serendipitous.